This is Eric Hoover for the Chronicle of Higher Education. Today we consider one of the most beloved inventions in American history, the air cannon, better known as the t-shirt gun. Few other inventions have such power to make grown men and women smile or to act like absolute fools. Why is that? Perhaps it derives from a national obsession with things that go up and then come down, like rocket ships. But to understand the origin of the t-shirt gun, one must think not of Apollo or of Sputnik, but of the Spud. Legend has it that one night, say a half century ago, some very bored middle-aged American guys built a device that would come to be known as the Spud gun. How did they do it? By crafting a big cannon out of beer cans, duct tape, and gasoline. Soon the humble potato, cheap, chunky, and built to explode, became the ammunition of choice among a nation of backyard engineers. By the late 1990s, a handful of small companies, drawing on potato gun technology, were selling CO2-powered cannons that fired t-shirts. Today, t-shirt launchers are staples on college campuses. Recently, I visited George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia, hoping to fire a t-shirt gun myself. Greg Kennedy, the marketing director for athletics, showed us the top secret location of the university's gun. Then he showed us how it works. What he does is pump this thing up, takes a few seconds to get the CO2 in the chamber. And once you're at a pretty good level, you can kind of get the crowd into it like this. And then uh, let's pick section 101, get a good base, boom, fire it off and uh, into the stands. We're creating some fun. Mr. Kennedy also described the gadget's considerable allure. And uh, for some reason, the fans just get really into it. They love getting free stuff. The gun is cool. Uh, it makes a pretty neat noise when you shoot it off, and it's just something about somebody catching a T-shirt that really gets them into the game and into the fan experience. Jake Wilson, owner of Air Cannons, Inc., will happily build you one of several different types. Mr. Wilson's company specializes in custom designs, soda bottles, human arms, pretty much anything you can imagine. Incidentally, the list of things you can shoot safely out of an air cannon is long. Nerf balls, hats, socks, stuffed animals, paper money, cracker jacks. Also, hot dogs and submarine sandwiches will work as long as you wrap them properly and don't turn the gun's pressure up too high. Generally, t-shirt guns are safe. The only known fatality was that of Maud Flanders, a character on The Simpsons who died back in 2000 after she was hit with a barrage of flying t-shirts. On George Mason's basketball court, I finally got to fire the university's gun into the stands which were, unfortunately, empty. The gun was heavy, the CO2 canister was cold, and when I pulled the trigger, there was a satisfying kickback. I wanted to do it all afternoon, but eventually, Mr. Kennedy had to get on a bus to travel with the men's basketball team, and so it was time to put the gun away. This time, he packed it in a special case behind a locked door. I did not leave empty-handed, though. The kind folks at George Mason made sure I went home with a T-shirt.